o'clock. Hopefully you all can hear me okay. Um, hello everyone and welcome to our presentation tonight. Tonight we're going to be doing a historic architecture walking tour along College Avenue in Appleton. I'm Katie Stope. I'm the local history librarian here at Appleton Public Library and I'm excited to be sharing some stories, some history, some architecture, and hopefully it'll feel kind of like you're exactly right on College Ave walking along with us but not um, some of the environmental issues that we might have, or, you know, we did some in-person um, walks last week and we had a lot of traffic and noise and stuff and a little bit of wind. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to enjoy a virtual atmosphere with all, all those kind of external distractions and learn a lot. And then of course, I encourage you guys um, as you're able to, to explore College Ave on your own, and, you know, definitely take a look at some of the unique architecture that we'll be talking about in person and live. Um, I see somebody already used the Q&A box. Um, we do have the Q&A box active and um, it is being recorded. So, yes, you can watch it later. Um, it will be posted on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions during today's session, definitely feel free to use that Q&A box. Um, I'll be checking it kind of throughout. I'm kind of a one-person show tonight, so it's a little hard to do the presentation and pay attention to the Q&A and chat box, um, but just know our, our check-in periodically on that Q&A box, and we'll answer some questions throughout or at the end. Um, so keep them coming. If you have questions, feel free to, to type in the Q&A box, and I will take a look. All right, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, Again, we're gonna be discussing a few of the buildings and sharing information tonight about um, some of the architectural details, some of the businesses. We're gonna share a lot of historic photos. Unfortunately, we can't talk super extensively about every single building because we would be here all night. Um, but we have some great historic photos and information to share and um, just a little taste of every building that we're gonna be walking past tonight. So we have a lot of information packed into this hour or hour and a uh, quarter um, talk tonight. So we'll go ahead and get started. So just to orient you to where we are, we are starting our walk today at the corner of Morrison Street and College Ave. We're gonna be on the south side of the street, kind of where you see that blue arrow pointed. So these first two buildings that are here are the J. Kippa Law and RX Link Pharmacy buildings. Um, and you can see, um, to kick us off, we are going to be sharing a historic photo from the Post Crescent. Um, it's an undated photo, but it's circa the 1860s during the Civil War period. Um, so this is a histor historic view of that area um, of where we're going to be starting our tour. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's a coffin business. On the right-hand side is the Johnston house, which is um, a hotel in Appleton at that time period. And then there's also a cool kind of horse and buggy wagon um, coming down the street towards us. So I thought this was a really great way to kind of see what Appleton was like um, during this time period. And then we'll explore and talk about some of the bus businesses and buildings that kind of um, came up after this as well. Um, our next map that we have, um, it's a really great map that we have in the library. It's called the Bird's Eye View Map. It's from 1867, um, so possibly a few years after that Civil War era photo was taken. And I just drew a yellow box around it just to show you this is kind of the section of College Ave that we'll be talking about tonight and, and learning a little bit more about. So um, we're going to be focusing on College Ave from Morrison down to Superior Street. And then to orient you to what it looks like today, this is a 2022 photo of um, the south side of this 100 block of East College Ave. Um, so as I said, that first building and the second building are the J. Kippa Law and the RX Link Pharmacy buildings. Those two buildings aren't overly historic. They only date back to 1937. Um, historically, some businesses that were at these locations throughout the years include the Great Midwest Savings, um, Kraut Kramer's Hardware, and Pond Sport Shop. So if you guys um, are familiar with Appleton and grew up here or remember those businesses, those were where they were located. The building next door where Scooter G's and the Rug Company are currently is a historic building and it dates back to October of 1873, so maybe about six years or so after that bird's eye view map was created. That building um, is historically called the Warner Wharton Building and that's the first building we're really going to focus on because it's historic and cool. 
Um, so the current businesses, like I said, are the Rug Company at um, 127 and Scooter G's at 129 on the left. It was built in October of 1873, and the architect behind the building was William Waters, who we'll talk about in just a second. And the architectural style that it's in is the High Victorian Gothic style. So just a little bit of a note on that architectural style. It's always done in brick or stone like this building was, and they usually have polychrome bands of decorative masonry, and the windows and the doors are usually accented with brick or stone trim, like you can see in that photo. Um, you can see definitely represents that high Victorian Gothic style, and they usually um, have that brick along the windows in contrasting colors like you can see in the photo. So before we dive a little bit deeper into the building and pointing out some of the other unique details and the history of this building, I want to take a minute to talk about William Waters because he's designed quite a few of the buildings we're going to be talking about this evening. So William Waters was an architect who lived and worked in Oshkosh from 1867 to 1917. Um, he came from New York, and by 1874, he was one of the most sought-after architects in this region, thanks in part to Oshkosh's history. So obviously, we're in Appleton, we are going to focus a whole ton on Oshkosh history, but for those who aren't familiar with Oshkosh's history, they had a lot of really devastating fires in 1874 and 1875. Well, of course, the fires destroyed a lot of buildings, a lot of buildings had to be rebuilt, they needed an architect to design these buildings, and William Waters just happened to be at the right place at the right time, had a great design talent, um, so that was part of the reason why he really um, was, became one of the most sought after architects in the region. Throughout his time, he designed well over 150 structures, many in the Fox Valley, a few throughout the state, and as well as a few outside of the state. Of course, being based in Oshkosh, he has a lot of notable Oshkosh structures, like the Oshkosh Public Library, the Grand Opera House, the Oshkosh Public Museum, and many of their older schools, churches, downtown businesses, and some of their residences. But since we're focusing on Appleton, um, these are some of the notable Appleton structures he's responsible for. So like I said, several buildings along College Ave that we'll get to tonight, um, some residences and other buildings that are no longer standing, including the Commercial National Bank building, which we'll talk about um, when we get further down by the Zulke building, and the old Third Ward School. Um, so I have a really great photo of the old Third Ward School from the Images of Appleton book from the Appleton Historical Society. Um, so I really wanted to point out the really cool, unique architectural details and just um, talk about this building for a second, even though it's technically not along College Ave. Um, so this school was located on the northeast corner of 5th and Locust Street and was built in 1884. And the really cool architectural details that you can see with the arrows there are um, the French style roof and the clock tower that has four faces on it. So you can see the clock from all different um, views. This school was later known as the Old Jefferson School and it was eventually um, raised in the 1950s. So it is no longer standing. Hopefully this um, postcard photo looks familiar to you guys. This is a, a postcard photo of Hearthstone from 1983, um, courtesy of Rosemary DeBrain, um, available on Fox Valley Memory, which is one of our wonderful historic photos sites. Um, so Waters was the, har ar the architect behind Hearthstone, which is still standing, of course, over on Prospect Avenue. And they have a really great museum. I highly recommend um, taking a tour and exploring more about Hearthstone, both Birth, both inside and outside. Um, hopefully you guys are familiar with what Hearthstone is, but if you aren't, it is known, of course, as being the first private residence in the United States to be illuminated using hydroelectricity from a central Edison system back in 1882. So this building um, was done in the Queen Anne architectural style and was originally owned by the Henry J. and Cremora Rogers um, family. And they lived in it for many years. And, you know, then it eventually, I think at one point it was a restaurant. And now, um, like I said, it's a historic museum. So go take a look at it. And then the last one um, I'm going to show a photo of before we get back to our tour is 315 West Prospect Ave. So this is one of the residences um, that is right down the road from Hearthstone. It's still standing. And um, this was the John Hart Wharton residence located at 315 West Prospect. It was built in 1870 in the Italianate style. And John Hart Wharton um, owned a lumber business and was president of the Commercial National Bank of Appleton. And he was brother he was a brother to William Warden of the Warner Wharton block, um, which we're going to turn our attention back to now. 
So again, this is the Warner Wharton building. Um, the really unique architectural detail on this building that a lot of people fail to notice is the four W's that are on the building. So you can see one of them um, in this photo. So those four W's represent the original owners, William S. Warner and William G. Wharton. Um, they were both um, pioneers of Appleton and the Fox Cities. Warner owned a mercantile business, and then once he settled in Appleton, he actually became a lawyer, and he practiced law for about 30 years. He also bought the first, first four lots in Appleton in February of 1849 for a whole $50 each. Steal of a deal nowadays with uh, the housing costs. Um, but he also was responsible as being overseer of the roads. And he actually was um, part of the reason why they cleared the, the lumber from College Ave and what became College Ave. So where we are along our tour, he was responsible for that now becoming a business district basically. Wharton um, came to Appleton in 1849 on a prospecting tour, and in 1853 moved his family here. He was a lumberman and manufacturer, as well as a president of the Fox River Flour and Paper Company. So if you look closely at the building, you can see the four W's. So there's the first one. And then in the second photo, I'm going to point out all the other three. So on the left hand side is that first one that we first saw in that last picture. Then you can see the second and third ones. Of course, that third one's kind of a little hidden thanks to that tree. Um, and then the fourth one is right there on the other side um, in between where authors is right there. So next time you find yourself along College Ave, definitely see if you can point out all four of the W's. And um, again, those W's represent the original owners of the building. And who knows, maybe William Waters being the architect of the building also had to deal with, you know, putting all those W's on the building. All right, some other really great architectural details, of course, um, are the windows. So these windows are what they call the pointed stilted arch motif. So you can see at the top of the windows, they have a, a kind of an arch. They're not, you know, flat windows or, you know, a line or anything. That's a very kind of decorative style that they used in that high Victorian Gothic style. And then you can also see in that second picture, there's some ornamental pressed brick throughout the building. So there's this beautiful flower design throughout the building, including at the top of the building. Um, so again, you know, next time you find yourself on College Ave, definitely take a look and see if you can spot all these unique kind of elements of this building that they, you know, really had some attention to detail in this building. And then here's a, a top shot of, of the roof. Um, I know it's, you know, not the best photo, but it's as, as good as we could do without getting higher up. Um, but you can see again where the arrow is that they have um, that pressed brick kind of design up there as well, as well as the kind of fancier kind of um, roof line that again, you know, depicts that high Victorian Gothic architectural style that this building represents. The brick also um, was possibly painted or maybe sandblasted at some point. It's you know now kind of more of a beige kind of color. Um, but as you can see in our next um, photo, we have a historic photo um, from the Wisconsin Historical Society that shows it was kind of more of like a reddish brown almost um, at that time. And it definitely was in need of a paint job at that time. I'm guessing this photo is probably from the late 70s or early 80s, um, probably when the building was um, put on the national and the state historic register for historic places. So you can definitely see, um, you know, the, the paint has been changed at, um, somehow at uh, some point. We have another really great photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Again, this one's undated, unfortunately, um, but I think it's probably from the 80s or 90s based on the businesses that are here. Um, so from left to right, we can see at the corner was the Great Midwest Savings Company. Then next to that was the Pond Sport Shop. I can't quite make out what the next business is. So maybe um, if anybody knows, you can type into the chat and, and see if you recognize that, that business that's there. Um, but on the right side of the Warner Wharton building is wire whisk of course. Um, the next door we have Guyettes and home craft shop which we'll get to in just a second to talk a little bit more about those businesses and those buildings. Now um, turning our attention to some of the businesses that were in this building throughout the years. Um, when the building first opened in 1873 the original use was Wharton was living there. They also had a legal office for Warner, Ryan, and Allen. 
J.F. Gerard also had an office there. He was a real estate man. And then on the first floor was the H.A. Finney Clothing Store and Blood Grocery, which you can see in these great 1873 advertisements for the Blood Grocery Store and um, the Finney um, Clothing Store um, des describing those businesses. Um, and that those ads are from the Appleton Crescent, which is one of the predecessors to our current Post Crescent newspaper. So this talks about um, them being in the Warner Wharton building. It was a, a very new building at this point in 1873, of course. Like I said, it opened in October of 1873. Um, so these are, are, you know, probably some of the first advertisements for these new businesses in that building. If the name Henry Blood doesn't sound familiar to you, he was the one who, of course, was um, running Blood Grocery, and he is very kind of prominent for Appleton history, so we're just going to chat about him for a minute. Um, so Colonel Henry L. Blood was a pioneer businessman who actually helped choose the site for Lawrence University, and he was responsible for laying the original plat for Appleton and building the first shanty here in 1848. Um, so he hired John F. Johnston and his wife Jeanette to move into that shanty and to board the men who worked on that first college building at Lawrence University. The Johnstons were then the first European American settlers in Appleton. And if you recall that that first photo that we looked at, that Civil War era photo, I pointed out on the right hand side was the Johnston house on the corner. And that was the hotel that the John F. Johnston and his wife Jeanette ran at that time. Blood also um, ran several local hotels and had the first postal delivery by stagecoach in 1851 that ran from Nina to Green Bay. So, of course, lots of contributions to this um, Fox Cities area that he was responsible for. So some other businesses that were here throughout the years. Um, Warner, of course, like I said, he had his law offices um, when the building first opened, but then he decided to move a little bit around College Ave. Wharton um, kept his interest in the building, and his son, William Denton Wharton, actually opened up a glass and china shop in the 1880s in that building. And then some other businesses include Banky's Clothes Shop, um, Iron Rail, Bill Paul Limited, People's Cash Meat Market, um, a tailor, James McKenney, and Joseph Freilich had a photography studio there, as well as the Mole Hall, which was a, a gift shop, I believe, and Wire Whisk. And of course, this is not a complete list of all the businesses that were here throughout the years, but just a small sampling for you. Uh, we have a really great historic photo of this block. Um, so this is a 1957 photo of the 100 block of East College, thanks to the Post Crescent. And we're going to see lots of these 1957 photos throughout our talk tonight because the Post Crescent, um, with it being the 100 year anniversary of Appleton, um, they decided to take college have photos all along the avenue. Um, so we have lots of really great photos that will show you those businesses and what these buildings look like at that time. Um, so in this photo from left to right, you can see Pond Sports Shop is at the left. And then Banky's Clothes Shop was in the Warner Wharton building, followed by the Spiegel Catalog Order Office. And then on the second floor of above Spiegel um, was Peckman Studio, which was a photography studio. And then right next door was Bowlby's Candies. Here's another historic photo of this area. So you can see Pond Sports Shop to the left just a little bit. Then Hearts Menswear and the Mole Hole Gift Shop were in the Warner Wharton building in 1973. And then next door was Ellen Becker's. And then our, our last photo of this building is going to be the 1989 photo from the historic sites inventory when a lot of these um, buildings that are historic and we're talking about tonight were included in this inventory to just, you know, recognize their cultural significance, their historical significance, talk a little bit about their architectural, um, you know, elements and things like that. So we have this great book at the library um, that has lots of photos and information on some of, the, of these businesses and buildings around town um, that you can take a look at. Um, so in this 1989 photo, you can see on the left is Bill Paul Limited, and then on the right is Wire Whisk. Then to wrap up our, our chat about this building, I just have two more cool historic advertisements to show you. So on the left-hand side, you can see an advertisement from August of 1936 in the Post Crescent showing Congress Garden, which was a restaurant in the Warner Wharton building. And they were home of delicious Chinese and American dishes, as their advertisement says. And who wouldn't want to pay 45 cents to 75 cents for dinner right now, right? <laughs> 
And then on the right, you can see an advertisement from November of 1980 for Iron Rail, which sold a lot of clothing, it looks like, and um, had a good sale on, on some clothes, it looks like, lots of jeans and, and shirts. All right, so now we can finally continue on next door to College Ave. Um, so next, um, we have 125 and 123 East College, which is currently home to Authors Kitchen and Bar at 125. And then um, Eco Candle Company is at 123, as you can see in these um, current today's photos. Um, so this building was also designed by William Waters, the same architect that designed the last building. But these were done in Italianate style, um, which you can see through the curved segmental arches above the tall, narrow windows. That's really a hallmark of the Italianate style. And Italianate was the most common 19th century style in Wisconsin. So we're going to see a few more examples of this architectural style throughout our walk tonight. We're not going to talk super in depth about this building um, because we have so much to cover as we continue on down College Ave. Um, but I first, of course, want to talk about some businesses that called this place home and shared um, some historic photos before we move on. So some businesses that were here throughout the years, again, not an inclusive list, um, but at 125, Langstead Meyer Electric Company was here for many, many years. It was also home to several candy stores like Bowlby Candy, which we saw in that Post Crescent photo. And then there was also some restaurants here more recently like Subway and Peggy's Cafe. Um, the Hobby House um, was also here. Uh, they were one of the businesses that um, Previously, they had been in the Zolke building, which, you know, so many businesses could uh, talk about having time in the Zolke building um, before they moved down um, to other parts of College Ave. So Hobby House is one of those businesses that started in the Zolke building and then moved further east down College. On the other side, at 123, we had several clothing stores like the Ann Kiss store, which um, sold ladies apparel and Sam Goldberg clothing. There was also a couple paint shops like uh, Pope Paint Company and Mott's Paint and Varnish. And um, we saw the Easter Seal Homecraft shop in that photo when we looked at earlier um, at the Warner Wharton building. So that's that was what the, the Easter Seal Homecraft shop was. And Guyatt's, again, was the one that was on the other side. So. Here is our great 1957 view of this section of College Ave. So again, looking at the 100 block of East College. Um, so you can see to the left was that Spiegel Catalog Order Office in the Warner Wharton Building, Bowlby's Candies, um, Johnson's Dry Cleaners was um, in the 123 spot. Then right next door at 121 um, was Kipp's Restaurant, followed by Heckert Shoe Company, um, which was at 119 East College. And we're gonna be talking about those in just a second. Then to wrap up our talk on this um, building, you can see this undated photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society so showing wire whisk in the Warner Wharton building, subway, and then Heckert shoes um, when they actually moved from 119 down to 123 East College. Um, and then I also have a really great advertisement from October of 8, 1961 from the Post Crescent showing the grand opening of Joe's Sweet Shop, which was one of the, the many candy stores that were um, located along College Ave at this time. All right, our next building is 121 East College Ave. Um, so this is the Voigt block named for Frederick B. Voigt. Um, this building is currently home to the Olive and Rose Boutique as um, shown in this current photo. Um, so this building was built in 1870. We unfortunately don't know the architect of this building, um, but the architectural style is what they call commercial vernacular style. And commercial vernacular is basically the name of the style that they use where they don't really lean heavily into one architectural style over another, or maybe they combine several elements of different architectural styles kind of into one. Um, but what they essentially mean by vernacular is that these buildings reflect the traditions, the materials, and the methods of where they were built. So basically they're saying that this building represents Wisconsin at this time period of when it was built. As I said, um, this building is historically known as the Voigt Block or the Voigt Building um, for Frederick B. Voigt. He was a dealer in leather boots and shoes and we we'll see a really cool advertisement for, for his store in just a, a second. Um, but as you can see in the photo, um, the really unique architectural detail that a lot of people fail to miss about this building is the windows that are at the very top of the building. They're kind of these porthole style windows, you know, that you'd almost see on a boat instead of on a building. 
Um, it'd be cool to kind of go up there, I guess, and look out and see what the view is up there. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen any kind of other porthole style windows along College Ave. So definitely a, a cool, unique detail of this building. Some businesses that were here throughout the years um, include Voight Store, of course. Um, some billiard halls were also here throughout the years, like Carr Brothers and Stutz Billiards. Um, there's also several clothing stores, like men's clothing stores. Um, Bauer Find is the, is the main one. Um, and then several restaurants. And then for many years, of course, up until recently, Hey Daisy was here for quite some time. As you can see in the historic photo from this, um, era. Uh, it's undated, unfortunately, but I think it's probably from the 70s or, or early 80s. Um, so you can see to the left is Guyette's, and then right in the middle is the Easter Seal Home Craft Shop, followed by Dam Rose Restaurant, which was next door, and then Heckert Shoes when they were still at 119 East College. And then as promised, here's that great um, advertisement from the Appleton Post, another one of the predecessors to the Appleton Post Crescent newspaper. So this one's from August of 1883, showing F.B. Voigt's new shoe store, um, big bargains in boots and shoes. So he, you know, had quite a lot going on. And um, one cool thing that I, I saw on this advertisement that it talks about is Outer Gaming County now has a population of over 35,000 people. So 1888, you know, out of Game County, I guess, was, was, that was pretty big news that they had that many people, you know, now um, we're over 186, 100,000. So we've grown quite a lot in these last 130 years or so, definitely. Um, but I thought I'd share this great um, advertisement so you could learn a little bit more about the building's namesake. All right, moving next door. Um, so our next building is the Heckert Building. Um, this is 117 and 119 East College Ave. Um, the Heckert Building, of course, known for Heckert Shoes. You know, if you know Appleton or, or have been around Appleton for a while, you are probably familiar with the Heckert name. Um, so Herman Heckert Sr. was born in Prussia and came to Wisconsin at the age of 10. He founded the Heckert Shoe Company in 1888 and beginning in 1895, ran it with his son, Herman Jr. for several years before his son eventually took it over um, completely a few years later. This building um, was built in 1887 in the commercial vernacular architectural style, so just like the building um, that we just looked at, the kind of, it doesn't fall into one architectural style um, and kind of defies other architectural styles. Um, and again, unfortunately, we do not know the architect for this building either. Um, but this building currently has the vintage garden and Lillian's, um, as you can see in the photos from today. The really cool, um, unique details of this building are pointed out by the arrows. Um, so the top arrow is showing what's called the stepped gable. So it's a little hard to see in the photo and because and there's a big tree here, it's hard to see when you're actually there on College Ave. But if you look at the very, very top, you can see kind of little steps leading up to the very front or the very top of the building. So that's what they call a stepped gable. And we're actually going to see a really great um, example of a stepped gable when we get down to West College Ave. So um, remember that name, stepped gable, and I'll point out the really cool big one on, on West College for you. The other really great unique architectural detail here um, on this building is the beautiful brickwork at the very, very top of the building. You can see kind of like a, a diamond kind of shape brickwork design um, at the very, very top. And then around the windows is kind of beautiful, kind of um, different color bricks, kind of just adding a little bit more detail and, and beautiful design there to that building. So again, next time you find yourself on College Ave, definitely take a look up and, and, and admire um, these beautiful buildings we're talking about today. Here's our 1957 photo from the Post Crescent showing this block of East College. And um, in this photo, you can see a little bit better that stepped gable because there isn't that big tree in the, the way. Um, so you can see kind of the steps leading up to the very, very top in the middle. Um, so this um, 1957 photo, you can see um, th a great view of, of this block. So from left to right, you can see Kip's restaurant in that building next door with the porthole windows. Um, and then Heckert Shoes, followed by the Fashion Shop. So the Fashion Shop is another one of those businesses that were at one time, it was in the Zolke building. And then in 1936, they ended up moving down to um, the Heckert building. 
And then next door, you can see uh, a loan shop is kind of in the middle there between Fashion Shop and Eugene Wald's. So Eugene Wald was an optician and a jeweler um, who was there in the building to the right. Some businesses throughout the years at 119 and 117. Of course, Heckert Shoes um, was here for a really, really long time. Um, there's also Coppins Shoe Rebuilders, Shaheen Oriental Rug Imports, and then um, for a little time was Cobblestone Market Deli at 119. And then on the other side at 117, Carol's Buffet was here. And then they had several clothing stops like the Dawson Style Shop um, and Fashion Shop and Margie's Boutique as well. So you can see um, in this wonderful historic photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society, unfortunately it's undated, um, but I'm probably putting it at like the 70s or, or 80s. Um, you can see um, a little bit of the home craft shop to the left, then Dam Rose Restaurant, followed by Heckert Shoes and Margie's Boutique in the building that we're talking about now. And then right next door is About Time Antiques and just a little bit of the Bergen Brothers Ski and Sport Shop you can see on the very, very right. All right, moving next door, we're going to talk about um, 113, 115 East College Ave. Um, so this building is currently home to um, part of Lillian's. So Lillian, um, Lillian's is part of this building as well as the building that we talked about next door. Um, and then Division One clothing store and shoe store is right to the, to the right. Um, so this building was built in the 1880s. Again, we unfortunately do not know the architect for this building either. Not sure why there's this little stretch of college where we don't know the architects, but we have not been able to find out who designed these buildings, um, at least yet. Um, and again, this is that same commercial vernacular style that reflects the, the traditions and the materials um, of this, you know, uh, state. Some unique architectural details that you can see are what's called the decorative parapet, which is um, where that first top arrow is. Um, it's kind of like that little ledge kind of at the roof line. Um, so that's kind of a, a unique thing that, you know, some other buildings along College Ave don't have. And you can also see um, some keystoned square windows um, as evidenced by that other arrow. And um, there's some other cool little um, design details throughout the building and, and beautiful different color bricks throughout, again, that you can admire as you, um, you know, next time you find yourself along this stretch of College app. Some businesses that were here throughout the years um, include um, several jewelry stores like the AJ Camps Jewelry Store, Eugene Wald, who we saw in that 1957 photo. Um, Ellen Becker Furniture was also here. The fashion shop, of course, like I mentioned, was here and previously had been in the Zilke building. Um, Berggren's Ski and Sport, um, we saw in that last historic photo, as well as About Time Antiques and Joe Bowers Golf Academy. And then at the 113 spot um, was the People's Clothing Company, Wonder Clothes, so several clothing shops, the paint shop, um, some financial um, businesses like the Friendly Finance Corp and Northern Credit Company, as well as some um, gifts and collectibles kind of um, stores like Classics and Collectibles, T-Shirt Emporium, Petite Place, and then um, until recently Vagabond Imports was here for many years as well. Here are some great undated photos from the Wisconsin Historical Society showing some of those businesses that we just chatted about. Um, so on the first one, you can see a little bit of Margie's Boutique to the left, About Time Antiques, the Berggren's Ski and Sport Shop, and then Classics and Collectibles. And then to the very, very right, you can see a little bit of Peckman Studios, which is um, in the next building that we're we'll talking about in just a second. And then in the second photo, you can see Joe Bauer's Golf Academy and the Petite Place in that photo. Um, so I'm guessing that one's probably the 1980s or early 90s, and the, the photo on the left is probably the late 70s, early 80s is what I'm guessing based on the businesses that are here at that time. And then um, I wanted to also show this great photo. Um, it's a current photo of the back of the building. Um, they have this really beautiful mural at the back of the um, the building um, from when it was Vegabond Imports. You can see it says Vegabond Imports above um, the door that leads to the back there. Um, hopefully they keep this awesome mural though. And so next time you find yourself along College Ave, you know, walk around back too, because there's cool stuff in the back that you don't expect unless you just happen to walk back there to go to, you know, get some Joseph's gyros and, and then you see that. So that's what happened to me as I, I found that, well, going to get a gyro. <laughs> All right. 
So here is our next um, 1957 photo of this area. So again, we're still at the 100 block of East College. Um, so to the left, you can see a little bit of the fashion shop, followed by that loan store. And Eugene Walds, again, he was the optician and jeweler. Then we have the paint spot um, right in the middle there. And then the building to the right, um, which was at 111 East College, was being renovated at that time. So um, we don't know what quite was going on um, that was going to be there at that time, I guess. All right, moving next door to 111 and 109. Um, so this is currently home to Bonafide Juicery and Topper's Pizza. Um, so this building was built in 1890 in Italianate architectural style. So again, um, that kind of most popular 19th century style in Wisconsin. Um, so of course, we're seeing, you know, another example of it here in this building. And again, we unfortunately don't know the architect for this building either. Um, but some of the unique um, details that we can point out that really showcase that Italianate style are the stilted arch windows, um, as evidenced by that first arrow, where you can see, you know, again, it, it kind of has that beautiful arch above the windows, those tall, narrow windows, so once again, um, that Italianate style. And then at the very top of the building, you can see what are called dentals. Um, so that's another cool, unique detail of that Italianate style, which you can see a little bit better um, in our next photo here. Um, so you can see a little bit better those, those windows, those dentals, again, those kind of unique brickwork things um, throughout the, the top of the building. And again, uh, a little bit better view of those stilted arch windows and those tall, narrow windows um, at the top of the building. All right, some businesses that were here in this building throughout the years. There was lots of various saloons here, like John Garrett's. Um, he had a wholesale liquor store and a tavern, where, and he sold tavern supplies. Um, Palm Grove Tavern was also here. And then there was quite a few photography studios throughout the years, like F.J. Peckman and M.C. Kenny's Photography. So F.J. Peckman, um, he was a well-known expert photographer in these Fox cities. Um, in addition to his studio in Appleton, he also had studios in Kokona and Green Bay. So he was pretty well known in the Fox cities um, during his time period in Appleton. In the 109 side, we had a meat market for a few years, um, as well as um, several saloons. Um, the Miller and Zulke um, saloon was actually there for about 20 years, so quite a long time. And then um, Downtown Spa, Apparel Arts, Makarov School of Ballet, Hardly Ever Imports, and Glad Rigs were also here as well. And of course, um, some historic photos. Um, so this one's an undated one from the Wisconsin Historical Society, probably the late 70s or early 80s. Um, again, showing on the left, Peckman portraits. So Peckman, you know, again, the photographer. Um, apparel Arts was in the middle there. And then Footworks was in the building next door at 107 East College Ave, which we will talk about now. After one more photo of um, the 111-109 building, um, so this one again is an undated one from the Wisconsin Historical Society, probably the late 80s or early 90s. Um, so you can see a little bit of the Petite Place um, on the very, very left. And then at 111 was the M.C. Kenny Photography Studio. At 109 was Hardly Ever Imports. And then again, now we're going to talk about um, the next one. Just before um, we do that, though, we're going to take a look at um, the 1957 view of this this little stretch of College Ave. Um, so you can see Spa Lounge to the left right there, followed by Otto Jen's Clothing Store at 107 East College, which is the next building we're talking about. And then at 103 is Leith Furniture. All right, so 107 is our next building along the block. Um, so this is where Brood Awakenings currently is. Um, so this building was built in 1880, again, in that commercial vernacular style. And again, we unfortunately don't know the architect. Um, so again, you know, I'm not sure why this little stretch of College Ave, we don't really know the architects or there's lots of commercial vernacular um, style buildings in this little stretch, but that's how it is. Um, so it, the really great um, architectural designs or architectural details in this building include the beautiful brickwork at the very, very top of the building that you can see in this photo. Um, so you can see kind of this big kind of white band, just like a nice little detail um, along the top of the building. Some businesses throughout the years um, include, again, some various saloons, um, Benke's and Jen's clothing store, 
there was a tailor shop here, Jen's menswear, um, an American beauty salon, and Bookworks was here, as you can see in the photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Um, again, we don't have a date on it, but I'm guessing probably the late 70s or 80s um, based on the buildings or the businesses that are there. So you can see on the left is Apparel Arts again and, and Bookworks, and based on the cars that were there as well. Do I know when the parking meters were first installed? I do not. Um, I don't see any here in the photo. It's a little hard though with the, with the cars in the way, um, but that's a great question. It might be something that we might be able to research maybe in the Post Crescent, um, so I can make a note and, and try to follow up with you on that um, at some point. Good, good question though. All right, so here is, um, again, a 2022 view of this little stretch that we kind of just talked about and what we're going to talk about next, which is 103 East College. Um, so again, from left to right, we have 111, 109, 107, 103, and then you can see a little bit of 101 and a little bit of the Zilke building as well. Um, so again, this is the south side of the 100 block of East College Ave that we're talking about. So the next building is a really unique building. So this is 103 um, East College, and it's actually an L-shaped building that has a storefront on Oneida Street as well. Um, so that's why we also have 116 South Oneida Street on here. Um, so this is, um, as far as I know, the only L-shaped block that I'm aware of on College Ave. Um, so this is currently home to Depository, uh, Hoot & Company, Sunny Side Up Yoga, and Ivory Rose Bro Bridal Boutique. So um, as I said, you know, you can see in the photo, there's two different storefronts. So on the left side, you can see the College Ave storefront, which is 103 East College. And in the right photo, you can see that um, South Oneida Street um, storefront, which we'll take a look at a little bit closer in just a second. Um, so this building was built in 1882 in the neoclassical architectural style, um, which usually feature prominent columns and cornices derived from Greek and Roman architecture, which you can really see heavily um, in that, that photo to the left. You can see a lot of columns and I have a little bit better of a photo in our next slide um, that shows a little bit more of those columns. Um, the architect behind this building was Charles Hove. Um, so he designed the United Street part of the building, and they consider that to be done in the high Victorian Gothic style as well. Um, as, as he also designed the College Ave, which was in that neoclassical neo architectural style. So two different, so two different storefronts, same building, same architect, same time period of when they were built, but two different architectural styles, which is kind of unique and cool. Um, but first, I want to chat a little bit about Charles Hove, um, just because he, you know, designed a couple other buildings that we're also going to see tonight. So Charles first came to the Nina area in 1875, and then in, 19, in 1879 decided to move to Appleton, where he was an architect in Appleton from 1879 to 1889 when he moved to Washington. So some notable Appleton buildings include the Camps Harness Shop, which is down at 207 West College, and we're chat about towards the end of our talk tonight. Um, he also designed Temple Zion, Ryan High School and the Volksfreund building, um, which we're, we're show some historic photos of and chat a little bit about as well. Um, but you can see in the slide, there's a really great um, advertisement for his architectural services um, from October of 1881. Um, it says that he furnishes plans for public edifices and private residences of any style desired. Also detailed estimates of expense when desired, the best of references as to ability. So he's advertising his services in the newspaper. So here is a photo of Temple Zion, which he was the architect behind. Um, so Temple Zion was built in 1881 and was used in, um, as a synagogue up until 1932 when it was purchased by the First Assembly of God. Um, this building is a really wonderful example of 19th century vernacular architecture. It's still standing today over on North Turkey Street, though they don't use it as a religious institution anymore. Um, and this photo is from the Wisconsin Historical Society um, when the, I believe the Outagamie County Historical Society was using the building at the time. Here is a photo of Ryan High School, which is also a building that Charles Hove was the architect behind. Um, so Ryan High School was built in 1883 and first used um, for school in fall of 1884. 
It unfortunately was destroyed by fire in January of 1904, so it's no longer standing. Um, but where the school was located um, was where the current Carrie Morgan building is off of East Harris Street between Oneida and Morrison. Um, so that building is still there. Um, but after this, um, but before that, that that was where Ryan High School was. And again, you can see in, in the photos some of the cool, unique details that Charles Hove put into um, building this building before it was unfortunately burnt down. And then the last one um, that he designed that I'm going to show you a photo of is the Volksroin building. Um, so this was at the corner of College and Morrison, basically right across the street from where we first started our walk. Um, even though we started on the south side, this was actually on the north side. So that corner where most recently Peterson, Burke, and Cross was located. Um, so this um, building that is there now, though, is not the same building as you can see in the photo, and you're probably you know, reminiscing about what that building looks like. Um, so this building actually as well burns down, um, just like the last um, photo that we took, we talked about. So this building burned down in April of 1981 when the WA Close um, store was located there. And if the name Volkskreund doesn't sound familiar to you, it is German. Um, so it's for the German language newspaper that was in Appleton. That newspaper began in 1870 and was published weekly for those German immigrants who came to Appleton and of course wanted to read read the news in their native language. Um, the photo that we have of this building is undated, unfortunately, um, but you can see it's when the Perenboom Dry Goods and Clothing Store and Whitman Law Office was in the building at the time of the photo. All right, turning our attention back to College Ave. Um, so again, we're looking at 103 East College Ave that Charles Hove um, was the architect behind. And this is the entrance to 103 East College. I think it's a, a pretty unique um, entrance because it has this little alcove that you have to walk through to get to um, the, the building entrances. Whereas, you know, all the other businesses that we've, and build, buildings that we've um, looked at up until this point kind of have their, their entrance right off the the main streetway um, so this one has that little cool alcove that makes it a little unique um, they also have these really cool architectural details in the columns um, that you can see as pointed out by that arrow that i have for you so this is really a highlight of that neoclassical architectural style that this um, building embodies and at the top of the columns um, right where you can see the arrow right here are what are called Corinthian pilasters. You can see a little bit better detail right here in this photo to the right. So these Corinthian pilasters kind of give the appearance that they, you know, support the building in some way. You know, it's a column. You'd think it's supporting the building somehow. But these um, Corinthian pilasters are, are basically just for show. They're, they're to make, you know, the building look a little bit more regal and beautiful. Um, so they don't have any kind of supporting quality to, to the building other than um, being a beautiful architectural detail that you can um, take a look at when you walk past. Looking at the top of the building, there's also some more of those Corinthian pilasters up at the second floor um, and third floor, I mean, um, and then you can also see some really great ornamental pieces between the second and third floors. Um, you can also see um, the difference in the window styles between second floor and third floor, I think, is really unique for this building. Um, so the third floor ones are you know, of course, those stilted kind of arched windows again with these really beautiful um, top pane design in those windows. And then on the second floor, they're a little bit more plain there. They just have that, um, you know, not not arched window, um, just one single pane down the middle. Um, so not sure why there's a difference between the second and third floor windows. You know, maybe at some point they replace them. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, there's, that's a unique um, detail um, of this building. And then turning our attention to the Oneida Street storefront. So remember, this is an L-shaped block. So even though there's two different storefronts, it's the same building connected by an L. Um, so here is a top, here's a snapshot of the top of the building um, where you can see the unique details throughout the top, like the arched brickwork um, above the windows. And then of course, some beautiful pressed brick and intricate brickwork at the very top of the building um, where all those beautiful arrows are pointed. 
And then again, if you go around the back of the building, you will see a little remnant of when Leith Furniture was here and they had their shipping and receiving area in the very, very back of the building. So you can see just a little bit is left of, of that Leith Furniture shipping and receiving area. But again, a cool thing that happens when you walk behind the buildings and um, explore a little bit. Some businesses that were here throughout the years include the Saker and Diedrich uh, Funeral Home. Sears was here for a little bit. Leith Furniture, of course, um, that we saw in that older historic photo. Wire Whisk was here before they moved further down East College. Michael's Bookstore was here. Peppermill Restaurant, Campini's Restaurant, which you can see in the photo, as well as a law office is also here in this undated photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Um, there's also other numerous offices like um, accounting offices, Vietnam Veterans Association was here for a number of years, and then of course various hair salons and yoga studios throughout the years as well. Here are some other great photos of this, the College Ave storefront on the left where it shows Leith Furniture, and then on the right is showing Campini's restaurant when it's um, at the, the Oneida Street storefront. And another great um, photo courtesy of the Wisconsin Historical Society again shows that Oneida Street um, storefront where Peppermill Restaurant is and then you can see um, 101 East College, 100 East College across the way and a little bit of the Avenue Mall um, which we'll chat about in just a second. All right, heading to the corner of College Ave and Oneida for our last building that's on the south side of the 100 block of East College. So this is 101 East College. So this is the 1957 view where you can see Leith Furniture is at 103 in the building we just talked about. And at 101 is George Rao Jewelers. And um, this um, 101 East College is currently home to Bagelicious. Um, so I have a, a photo that shows you what it looks like now. So this is, you, know, you can see Bagelicious. And then to the left is that 103 building. To the right of the photo, you can see a little bit of the Zulke building. So this building um, at 101 East College was historically known as the Christ Brick Block for George Christ. So he was an early settler coming from Milwaukee to Appleton in 1853. He was originally born in France and came to the United States when he was about eight years old. In 1861, he built the Appleton House, which at the time that he died in 1907 was the city's oldest hotel at that time. It was actually located on West College, so just a little ways away from this building, um, where the Trout Museum currently is standing, though that's not the, the same building that the Appleton House was in. The Trout Building um, that they're currently in is um, known as the Regal Building, and it actually dates back to 1922 um, and was Brett Schneider Furniture for a number of years, um, if you guys are familiar with, with that building. So Christ was also a really large landowner in the area and involved in organizing a lot of um, things in the community, like he organized the Fox River Hub and Spoke Manufacturing Company and was part of organizing the Appleton Volunteer Fire Department, as well as um, he served as the fire chief for the Appleton Fire Department for about nine years. So lots of great contributions to the community from, from him. Um, Looking a little bit closer at the building, you can see some of the unique architectural details. So this building was built in 1878 in the Italianate architectural style with Charles Hove, the same architect we just um, talked about a few minutes ago who designed the last building. He was the architect of this building as well. So zooming in at the top of the building, you can really spot some of those architectural details that embody that Italianate style, like the decorative pediment and frieze, which is the very, very top of the building. So really, really fancy. Um, most Italianate style buildings have kind of really fancy roof line up at the top. Um, and then you can also see those beautiful stilted arch windows. And there's, of course, um, also some beautiful pressed brick at the top of those stilted arch windows. Um, which you can see a little bit better in these photos here. So this is um, showing the side of the building along Oneida Street. And then you can see um, in the second photo to the right, some, some more um, of the, the decorative um, top of the building and then those pressed brick details at the top of the window there. 
All right, some businesses that were here throughout the years. Um, there's lots of pharmacies that were here um, starting from the when the building first opened. Um, so Camps and Saxler Drugs was here, Downer Pharmacy. In the photo, you can see there's also a jeweler. So Sam Belinky Jewelers, and then to the left was Leith Furniture, of course, from 1973. There's also a couple other jewelry stores through, here throughout the years, like Goodman's Jewelers, Fisher's Jewelers, and George Rao, which we saw in that first photo that we looked at. And then before Bagelicious came here, Starbucks was there for, for a few years. Now we're going to um, turn our attention across the street. Um, so, of course, this whole time we've been talking about the south side of Oneida Street. Um, but now we're just going to pop across the street just for a minute to look at 100 East College Ave. So the 100 East College Ave building is very unique and important to Appleton's history because it's the oldest of the buildings in this stretch of College Ave. So this building was um, built in 1856 and it was actually built a whole year before Appleton officially even became a city in 1857. So because of that great history of it being so old, um, Appleton decided to preserve this building when they built the Avenue Mall around it in the early 1980s. Unfortunately, to um, accommodate the Avenue Mall, they of course had to raise a bunch of the other beautiful historic buildings that were around this building to make room for that Avenue Mall, which is why we've really focused our talk thus far on the south side of East College because everything that's on the north side is, is not very old and historic. Um, but the Avenue Mall, of course, if you're not familiar with Appleton's history, um, it opened in March of 1987. And as you can see in the photo at the time, Burger King was in the 100 um, East College location. And you can see the Avenue Mall around it. Um, so Burger King was in that building for about 20 years until 2000. That's when they closed. Um, and then two years later in 2002, that's when the Avenue Mall changed over to the city center plaza, which it continues to be called today. But um, now they're looking at redeveloping that area. So who knows how much longer it'll be known as the city center plaza. We'll have to stay tuned, I guess. Um, looking at some current photos of this building, you can really see, you know, they really did build the Avenue Mall right up to the, the side of this building. Um, so you can definitely see, you know, it's, it's built around it, definitely. Um, you can also see the front of the building in that next photo. So it shows, um, you know, the whole the whole building there in that photo. Um, so historically, this building was known as the Adkins Stone Block. It was built by C.G. Adkins for a general store and office space. So C.G. Adkins was originally from New York and came to Outagamie County in 1853. So again, one of the kind of early pioneers of this area. This building was also, um, in addition to being one of the oldest in Appleton um, and the oldest in this stretch of college, was the first three-story building built in the city. And I, of course, it's still one of the oldest standing buildings in all of Appleton, not only what's available um, in this stretch of College Ave. We aren't really sure who the architect of this building is. Um, there's a little debate on if it's commercial vernacular or if it's Italianate style based on um, the top of the building. It looks a little bit more Italianate. Um, but that's up for debate, I guess. Um, of course, as we've already mentioned, that commercial vernacular style kind of means that it doesn't really fit heavily in, in one architectural style over another. So maybe some people more lean heavily towards um, calling it commercial vernacular. We have a really great historic photo. It's undated. It, it was post, or published in the Post Crescent in eight, 1980, but we know that the photo is not from 1980. It's um, from when they did a really great article talking about the history of this building um, in 1980. Um, but in the photo, you can see um, that D. Land's Business College, B. Douglas Dental Parlors, and Jake's Clothing um, is in the building. So Adkins, who originally built the building, um, had his store there until 1870. In 1870, Dr. Byron Douglas purchased the building, and he was the first dentist in Appleton. So you can see um, this is when he was owning the building and, and was part of it, as well as Jake's Clothing and the D-Land Business College. Some other businesses throughout the years include um, 
some candy shops like Diana Sweet Shop, um, Murr Drugstore was here. A lot of people, though, know it as Grace's Apparel. Um, it was here for, for quite a while, as you can see um, in this photo from the 1970s from the Wisconsin Historical Society. You can see it's when Grace's Apparel was here. And in that photo, you can also see it's before the Avenue Mall, so you can actually see the whole um, left side of the building, and it's when Oneida Street went all the way through. So. Um, you know, you, we know it's from the 1970s and not, you know, later. Um, after Grace's Apparel, of course, Burger King, like we saw in that first historic photo, and then a number of various restaurants is, um, were here, like City Center Grill, Cafe on the Ave, El Patron, and then um, Bowl 91, which is um, where the, the restaurant that's currently there has been there since 2017. Now we're going to pop back um, to the south side of College Ave, and we're going to move along to um, what's called the 100 block of West College Ave. Um, so the first and probably most notable of the businesses that are on this um, West College Ave stretch, of course, is the Zulke building, which most people recognize immediately um, when they are on College Ave. So here's just a map showing you where we are in um, location to everything else. So Oneida Street's really that dividing line between East and West College Ave. And this um, is a historic photo or a historic postcard that shows um, that intersection of Oneida and College. So you can see on the left side is where that 101 East College Ave is. And then on the, the right side is where um, the 100 block of, of West College starts. And you can see um, in the photo is the original Zilke building. Um, we don't have a date for it, but it's, of course, pre-1930s. So you can see um, that Zilke building when it was just three stories. And then right behind it with that arrow, you can see our public library and city hall building um, before it you know, became where it is on Oneida Street now. So thought that was a cool historic photo to share. So that building that we just saw in the postcard was actually the second of three um, Zulke buildings, though the first building didn't have anything to do with Zulke at all. Um, so let's chat a little bit about the history of this spot. Um, so the first building that was built there was a frame building that was put up in the early 1850s, and it was occupied by a drugstore and feed store for a number of years. And the Masonic Lodge also had space on the third floor of that building. In 1875, that building was destroyed by fire, unfortunately. And even though this was a really popular area and a popular time of growing on College Ave, that corner was actually vacant for a few years before they built that second building that we just saw in that postcard. So that was that three-story building that was put up in 1881. Um, when it first opened in 1881, it was the spot of Commercial Bank. There was also the Schlafer, Barrett, and Tesh Hardware Company. Second floor had a lot of offices, and then third floor, again, was the Masonic Lodge rooms. In 1926, the building was purchased by Irving Zilke for his music store. So Zilke was originally um, from Hortonville, and he worked with his father at his father's bank for a number of years. Um, in 1930, or he opened a, a music store first in Hortonville, and then in 1913 decided to come to Appleton, where he then opened a music store in Appleton before in um, 1926 when he purchased um, what became the, the Zilke building. Um, so he did a lot of remodeling in 1926 when he first took over that building, made enormous changes to the interior and exterior. At the time, the newspaper reported his store was one of the finest of its kind in the Middle West, comparing very favorably with the best in the largest cities, and that every possible convenience for customers and for businesses has been installed in that building. So all of those renovations that he'd done when he first took over the building had just been completed when on January 25th, 1928, a fire broke out and ended up destroying that beautiful building, unfortunately. So here is a great photo from our first 100 years um, book that shows um, the remains or that damage from that 1928 fire that happened at the Zulke building. So Mr. Zulke was actually the first to discover the flames and the fire that night. Um, they think that the fire started somewhere in the basement, probably along the furnace. Um, firemen from Appleton and five surrounding cities actually fought that fire in sub-zero weather. So keep in mind, again, this is January in 
1948 in Wisconsin. It's very, very cold in January, right? Um, so they fought that fire in very, very cold weather, and they fought it all throughout the night hours into the early morning hours of the next day. At the time, it was said to have been the most disastrous fire Appleton experienced in more than a quarter of a century. And a few of the neighboring buildings um, even experienced a little bit of damage as well. So in this photo, you can see in the background here, you can see Fisher's Jewelers, which was at 101 East College, that building we just chatted about. They had their windows um, cracked by the heat of the flames and some of their jewelry that was in their store was actually damaged by the heat of the flames. Even though, you know, Oneida Street is across the street, you know, that, that fire had raged so heavily um, that it caused some damage to them as well. And even cars that were parked along the Ave at that time um, had a little bit of damage as well, um, just from the heat of that fire. As you can see in the photo, all that really remained of the Zulke building was kind of this one little wall. And of course, they had to raise that completely because it just wasn't um, able to be rebuilt or anything. Um, the building was a total loss, as were all the contents that were in the building. So Zulke, of course, had his music store where he had a large stock of music instruments that included at least 16 grand pianos, 40 upright pianos, hundreds of radios, thousands of phonograph machines or photo phonograph records and machines. And he also was running a radio station in the building at that time. So all that equipment was completely destroyed in that fire. There were other businesses that were in this building at the time, like the Continental Clothing Company and Bannister Studios, and they also lost everything. So they lost their stock of clothing, they lost valuable records, um, they had musical scores of early plays, and even some costumes that they were going to use for an upcoming play that were completely destroyed in that fire. So it affected more than just Zulke, of course. Um, so this was a really, really devastating fire um, for the people of Appleton, and, and um, such a big fire that lots of um, newspapers from throughout the whole state were reporting very extensively on this fire. It was reported that night that as Zolke saw the flames destroy his building, he started planning a modern building that would be fireproof yet aesthetically pleasing. So he selected materials like steel, stone, marble, and brass to construct the Zolke building that we see today. So at the time, it was deemed Appleton's first skyscraper. And it was designed by architect Smith and Brandt in the neo-Gothic neo revival style. When they first opened the building in November of 1931, it was just seven stories, which was an upgrade from the, the previous three-story building. But it also had a foundation that would support up to 20 stories. So, I mean, they could still, I guess, at this point, even add to the Zulke building um, for what it is now. But they had an open house for the building in December of 1931, and it was really big news. Like the Post Crescent had a huge, I think, five page spread talking about the building and its opening, dubbing it Appleton's version of the Empire State Building, which had also opened in 1931 and, of course, was also a really big deal and a big architectural marvel. So the mayor at the time, Mayor John Goodlin Jr., who you can see in this photo from the Appleton Memory Project, um, he said that this building was larger, more modern, and more conveniently planned and equipped than any building bus or business building on the avenue, and that the building has set a mark for other builders to follow. The beauty of its architecture, especially the elaborate, spacious first floor lobby with its luxurious marble walls and bronze trim is especially worthy of commendation. So the, bu the building was very, very beautiful even at that time, you know, and it still is nowadays. So here's a great postcard that we have of um, a drawing that shows that first seven floor, seven story um, Zulke building. And on the back of the building, you can see it has lots of um, detail about what the building looked like, what businesses that were there. Um, so it describes it as saying the exterior is of Bedford stone and granite with the interior lobbies and corridors entirely of marble. Sea layer aluminum alloy windows, copper cast concealed radiators, acoustic style ceilings to abate noise, a weather machine with fresh filtered moist air to provide a comfortable and healthful atmosphere. And then the businesses listed include, of course, Zilke's Music Store, Downer's Drug Store, the Fashion Shop, again, before it moved further down east, College Ave, um, the Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, various doctors and dentists, stockbrokers, barbershop, insurance, law, and other offices, as well as ladies' stores and beauty parlors. 
So right before that formal opening in, in 1931, um, it was actually at 90% occupancy. So you can see quite a lot of businesses um, are listed on this postcard showing, you know, what was there in the Zolki at this time. And so keep in mind, this is 1931. This is during the Great Depression. So not only did Zilke, you know, survive that devastating fire that wiped out everything he had, but he built this beautiful grand building in 1931 during the Great Depression, and then was able to fill it to 90% occupancy um, to really try to rebuild and, you know, make this beautiful building in Appleton um, work. And it still, you know, exists today. So that's exciting. So, as I said, this was Appleton's first skyscraper. It opened um, with seven floors. The original plans only called for it to actually be 10 stories, and city council actually had to change a, a city ordinance to allow construction of a building of that size. Zilke was very, very involved in building this building. He supervised all phases of construction and even designed some of the interior fixtures. And then in 1951, they um, put five more stories on top of the seven floors that you see, bringing it up to the 12 that we have now. So Zilke ended up closing his music store a few years after the building opened. He died in 1953, and his daughters owned the building for a few years until they sold it in 1957. Um, some businesses throughout the years, of course, we shared um, some of the businesses that were on that postcard, but of course we could be here all night listing all the businesses that were in the Zolgi building throughout the last, um, you know, 70 years or so. Um, but various doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountants, beauty salons, barbers, other offices like insurance agencies, health insurance, um, WHB Radio was here for a number of years, the candy shop, Stewart's Shoe Store, and many, many, many more, of course. Lots of people um, probably have memories of going to the Zilke building for some reason or another um, as they grew up in Appleton because there was just so much in the Zilke building. Here are some more current photos. Um, so unfortunately, we had to kind of sneak some interior design, uh, interior ones because they are currently renovating the Zilke building. Um, I believe renovation is near completion. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but they are turning it into a mixed-use property. So they're going to have retail space slated for the first floor. And then residential units are going to be on floors 2 through 12. Um, so you can see in that first photo to the left, the beautiful marble um, that is in that entryway. Um, so the marble that lines the, the lobby and the mezzanine of the, the building um, actually came all the way from eastern Tennessee. So again, remember, this was the Great Depression era when, um, you know, he was building this. So this marble was actually originally designated for an Appleton church. But unfortunately, because of the Depression, they could not pay for it. So Zilke ended up getting it for a steal of a deal and ended up putting it in this building. And it's one of the, the beautiful hallmarks of, of the interior of the Zilke building if you haven't been inside. Um, and hopefully they will keep it when they are renovating this building. Um, at the front of the Zilke building, you can also see the beautiful entryway. So I really love this beautiful stained glass and design of the arch over um, the top of the building or the, the top of the entryway. And of course, says um, the Ir Irving Zilke building, of course, he was very, very proud um, that this was his building. And um, this is a beautiful entryway to have into this, the front of the building off of College Ave. You can also see in this zoomed in photo, um, just the, the top of left of the entryway, you can see some of those Corinthian pilasters like we saw at the 100, 103 East College. Um, so again, those Corinthian pilasters, they kind of look like they, they might have some supporting function of the building, but they're really just um, to be architecturally beautiful and something that you admire and a unique little detail um, that sometimes gets missed, unfortunately, when we're rushing around here and there. Um, so definitely take a moment to look up um, and, and admire those cool architectural details like that. Along the side of the building, um, also a lot of people fail to notice that there is the initials IZ. So this is the top of the building that was added later in 1951. Um, so you can see the initials IZ throughout um, in between the floors and in between the windows. Um, so I have a little bit better of a zoomed in where you can actually see the I and the Z. Um, so this is on um, both sides of the building that you can see um, these initials. So Zilke, of course, was very, very proud that this was his, was his building. He wanted people to know that it, it was his building and it was a grand building. Here's some more um, exterior and interior um, 
photos showing some light fixtures. Again, we talked about, you know, Zilke was supervising some of them, some of them he designed. I'm not sure if these are for sure ones that he designed or not, but I thought they were kind of cool to look at. And, and again, kind of shows that beauty and grandness that this um, building embodies. So um, very cool to look at. And then again, some interior ones that we had to sneak. So apologies for the quality of the photos, but you can kind of see the grandness of that entryway, a little bit of the lobby. And, and again, that, that beautiful marble that lines throughout and the unique arch kind of way of that entryway. It's just, it's a beautiful building to walk into. And, and hopefully soon when they're done renovating it, we can see what they've kept and hopefully they've kept all the cool elements of it and we can admire it at some point again inside. All right, here is our 1957 photo of the, the Zilke building shortly after they added those additional stories. Um, so on the left, you can see the whole Zilke building. And you can see on that first floor are the household finance loans store and Jack Stewart shoes. And then in the, um, the next photo, you can see next door in the Olympia building, which is no longer there, um, was the Rose Shop and Retzen's, followed by Brett Schneider Furniture to the very right. So remember, Brett Schneider Furniture, that was the building that was there. And before, it had been the Appleton Hotel um, spot, but not where that, that building is. That building only dates back to 1922. So we're going to skip those buildings, um, but we're going to move down to the 200 block of West College, where we're going to wrap up our tour. Um, so we're going to talk about the, the couple buildings that are on the south side of the 200 block of West College as we wrap up our tour. So the first building that's at the 200 block is 201 West College Ave, um, which you can see is the current home of Voyager's Bakehouse. So this building, if you haven't noticed, has a really great mural on the side of the building. And I've been told um, that since they added a couple windows on the side of the building and it's kind of affected the mural, that they're planning on maybe repainting the mural or doing something else with the mural. Um, so stay tuned to see what happens with that. Um, but this building um, is in a commercial vernacular style. Again, designed by William Waters, who we talked about back at the beginning of the tour. Um, and this building actually cost about $8,200 to build at that time. Um, so I guess, you know, maybe a, an expensive building. I'm not sure what $8,200 um, was back in the, the 1870s, 1880s. Um, but I'm sure, you know, maybe at that time, it was considered kind of a, a grand building at that time. So... This was um, the first National Bank building of Appleton. So the bank originally began in 1870 with its first headquarters in the second floor of the Pettiboons Dry Goods Store. And in 1871, the bank ended up purchasing the land from Herman Bissing and tore down what was there, which was a wooden building that was housing a jewelry store. And then they built the building that you see today. So, some businesses throughout the years, of course, First National Bank was here up until 1932 when they moved across the street. Then it again kind of went back to its roots where they had some jewelry stores throughout the years like Otterley's Jewelers, Spectre's Jewelers, and Will's Jewelers. And then more recently, Avenue Hair Design and Crazy Suite were here before Voyager's Bakehouse. Some unique architectural details of this building include the Cream City bricks um, that, you sh that most likely came from Milwaukee. So Milwaukee is known as the, the Cream City. Um, and so a lot of buildings that you see with this kind of cream brick style um, usually came from Milwaukee because, again, that commercial vernacular style, they're taking the resources from the state and using them to, to build the buildings. And then you can also see some beautiful pressed brick designs throughout. And then, of course, another arched window way. So, uh, again, some beautiful details in this building. And then there's also a really cool plaque at the front of the building that shows Otterleys and commemorates um, their existence um, in this building. So you can um, take a look and, and see that next time you're along College Ave. And, Here's a really great historic photo. Unfortunately, it's undated, but we know it's quite a, a, an old photo based on the horse and buggies that are in the photos. Um, so this book, this photo is from the book, Our First Hundred Years, that we have at the library. So you can see that that first building, of course, is 201 West College. And then to the right is um, 203, where you can see in the top part is um, the Appleton Post, which is the next building we're going to be talking about in just a second. 
here are some more undated photos from the Wisconsin Historical Society showing when Otterley's Diamond Center was there. And then in the photo to the right, you can see a little bit more of Appleton Street and um, the, the rest of the 100 block of West College, which we'll chat about in just a second as we learn a little bit more about these upcoming buildings. And then, of course, we have a 1957 photo from the Post Crescent showing this 200 block of West College. So um, from left to right, we have Specter's Jewelers at 201, followed by Vets Emporium and George Otis Tavern at 203 and 205 West College. And then you can see a little bit of a, a loan store, I believe, um, in 207. So these next buildings are, are the ones we're going to chat about next. But first, we have one more um, historic photo of this little stretch. So we see a 1973 photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society showing Will's Jewelry um, or Will's Jewelers at the corner, followed by um, Pond Sports Shop and Cleo's Brown Beef Tavern and the Great Surplus Store. So these are all historic buildings that we're going to chat about now. All right, so the next one, 203 and 205, currently home to Cleo's Cocktail Lounge and Homeburger Bar. So um, this, you know, as you saw in that really, really old photo, um, is kind of sometimes known as the Appleton Post building. But Appleton Post actually didn't own the building at all. Um, they just rented the second floor. So this building was actually um, owned by Herman Bissing, so the same guy who owned the land and the building um, that of, of what became um, the first National Bank building. Um, so Herman Bissing um, was born in Germany and came to Appleton in 1863. So again, one of the early settlers. He was a local boot and shoe dealer in Appleton and owned several parcels of land in the city. Um, so this was built, I think, around 1880 or 1878. Um, there's a little discrepancy about exactly when it was built. Um, but this is, this is designed in the high Victorian Gothic architectural style by Lewis Bates. Um, so Lewis Bates was less of an architect and more of a contractor in the Appleton area. He worked a lot with William Waters, that first architect we had chatted about at the beginning. Um, Bates was really well known in the Appleton area. He came to Appleton about 1854 and was actually involved in a lot of building projects around the city. He built that second Zilke building that we saw the postcard of um, that was built in 1881. He also built a few residences around the city and the Hercules School in Appleton. And Bates Street, which is a, a few blocks away from College Ave, was said to have been named after him and his contributions to the city. So. Zooming in on some of the cool architectural details, probably my favorite, favorite, favorite part of this building are the lion's heads. So a lot of people don't look up and notice there's two lion's heads. So there's one right here and there's one right there. So as we said, the Appleton Post was on the second floor of this building and they just rented this space, but they knew before the post was here that the post was gonna be in this building. So that's why they put these lion's heads here. The lion's heads represent the roar of the truth, which is really important to journalists, of course. So that's why you see the lion's heads on the building. So just briefly, I want to mention the Appleton Post was Appleton's third newspaper. It was originally called actually the Appleton Motor, and it was founded by George Miller and Alexander Reed to counter the Democratic newspaper at the time, which was the Crescent. In 1920, the Appleton Post and the Appleton Crescent merged to become the Post Crescent that we have today. So they have a little bit more of a, of a history than the 102 years that they have been around as the Appleton or the Post Crescent. Other than the lion's head details, which is my favorite part again, um, in the photo you can see the really ornate um, top of the building. Um, and they call that the ornate cornice and gables at the top of the building, which really represent that high Victorian Gothic style. And they also have what they call carved keystone arch stilted arch windows. Um, so you can see that in the second arrow, the, the carved keystone stilted arch windows. And again, some really beautiful detail at the top of the window um, in, in all of these windows that a lot of people, you know, miss. And again, some more pressed brick um, in, in the, the details of the brick as well. Here's a little bit better view of the lion's head um, and the ornate details at the top of the building that really represent that Victorian Gothic style. So you can see all these really unique details, really Gothic kind of looking. Um, and again, you can see a little bit better zoomed in of the detail of this um, pressed brick on these stilted arch windows.
All right. The other really cool architectural detail, which is not very historic, um, but what I really enjoy is these beautiful stained glass windows. Um, so I'm not sure when they came on the building, but very unique and beautiful detail on that, that Clio's portion of the building. And again, some more beautiful pressed brick there that you can see as well. There's also this really great plaque on the Holmberger side of the building. So this plaque honors Andrew C. Jimos, um, who came to Appleton from Greece in 1916 and purchased the building in 1927. So as the plaque says, for 65 years, he operated a hat cleaning business, which was the longest tenure for a sole proprietorship on College Ave. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about um, Andrew Jimos and actually see a replica of his hat shop, you can visit the Appleton Historical Society Museum at 128 North Durkee Street, which is just a few blocks away off College Ave. Um, they have a wonderful exhibit all about Andrew Jimos. And like I said, they have a wonderful replica of his store. So you can actually see what it looked like. Um, and they're open Thursday through Sunday or by appointment. So definitely check them out. AppletonHistory.com is their website. And I highly recommend a tour there. Some businesses throughout the years um, that were home to this business or to home to this building um, include several stores like Vets Emporium, Bergen Brothers Sports Shop was here before they moved further down West College or East College, I mean. Um, There's also several stores like the Bottom Half, Accord B, and Boot Hill, and of course Cleo's Brown Beam Tavern, but originally they were actually on the other side of the building. Um, which we'll see in a second in one of the historic photos that we have. Um, and there's also a soft drink parlor. Of course, Jimos was here, Club Tavern, Anderson's Club Car, and then um, a couple other restaurants and taverns as well. And then here's that 1957 photo from the Post Crescent. So it shows Vets Emporium and George Otis Tavern on the left. And then Shop is at 207 West College, followed by Gibson Motors at 211 West College, which we'll go into a little bit more detail in a few minutes. And then here's another great photo um, from the Wisconsin Historical Society, again, showing this 200 block of West College. So we have Otterley's Diamond Center at the corner, followed by bottom half, and then Cleo's, again, on the right side of the building before they move to the left side, and then Great Surplus Store, and then you can see just a little bit of Gibson Motors, of course, at 211 West College. So the next building is 207 West College, currently home to Fika T-Bar and Tussler Law. So historically, this was known as the Gerhardt and Thomas Camps Harness Shop building. So they were brothers, and Gerhardt eventually bought out his brother and ran the business himself. And he was considered one of the finest leather crafters in the area at this time. And the building was designed especially for the harness shop. Um, so the east of the building, um, before there were actually buildings there, so before Gibson was there, they actually had a lot where they kept the horses for his shop and for the farmer's hotel, which was on the other side, um, which we'll chat about more in just a few minutes. Um, so this building was built in 1885 in that high Victorian Gothic style, just like the building um, that we just looked at, the same architectural style. And this was also designed by Charles Hove, who we chatted about earlier when we were looking at um, the buildings on East College. Um, so again, one of the more prominent architects in this area at that time. And so you can see in these current um, view um, what the, the building looks like at, or what the building looks like at this time. So again, another really cool, unique detail that people fail to miss because they fail to look up is there's a horse head at the very, very top of this building. So this pays homage to the original use of the building of it being a harness shop for the Camps Brothers. Um, so again, really cool, unique detail. You can also see by the other arrow right here, there's also these really unique kind of animal heads. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be, but they're very gothic looking and very cool, um, very unique that, um, and of course, represent that high Victorian gothic architectural style. You can also see Remember earlier I talked about the stepped gable and how the one that we looked at down at East College was a small one. Well, this is a big one. So you can see step, 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 all the way to the very top. So this is a really great example of a stepped gable as well. The other really great unique detail that you can see a little bit better in this photo is this beautiful, beautiful window. So they call this a baby rose window. 
Um, so it's again, you know, really beautiful element of this high Victorian Gothic style. Also, they have what's called a Mansford roof. So that's this part of the roof. Um, so again, another element of that high Victorian Gothic style. And of course, you can see a little bit better view full on of the, the stepped gable that's here. Some businesses throughout the years, of course, include the Camps Brothers Harness Shop, Wolf Shoe Company, um, some credit um, places, some shops like Family Fun, Great Surplus Stores was here for quite a while, Bold Salon, Crafty Woodmaker, and then of course, like I said, Tussler Law and Fika T-Bar are here now. We have a great historic photo um, from the Post Crescent, or not from the Post Crescent, from the Wisconsin Historical Society, excuse me, that shows when the Great Surplus Stores was here at 207 West College. So again, you can see the beautiful building and the cool details like the stepped gable and the horse head at the top in this building. Move in next door, we're at 211 West College, home of Gibson. So um, we're getting to the end here. Um, this is a really cool Art Deco style building that was designed by C.R. Meyer and Son. Currently it houses the Gibson Music Hall. And historically this was Gibson Auto and briefly um, there was a restaurant here called Gibson Grill. Um, but this is a current view of what the building looks like now. Uh, we have a really great historic photo from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Don't have a date on it, unfortunately, but it shows that there actually used to be a really cool garage door here that they used um, when there was a body shop here and they used this that the cars would come right off College Ave and drive right into the body shop and get their work done and then be able to drive right out. So very cool and I kind of wish that they still had that unique detail in the building, but it's unfortunately no longer there. Here's some more zoomed in photos of um, what the building currently looks like. So you can see some of the cool Art Deco style um, designs and elements here. So this building was built out of Carrara glass and has chrome tinted windows, along with some really cool ornamental design pieces like these beautiful um, design pieces in the glass throughout. So this building was built in 1931, so significantly younger than all the other build buildings that we've really talked about up until this point, other than the Zilke building, of course, which was also built in 1931, of course, after that devastating fire that we chatted about. And so the reason why this building dates back to 1931 is also because of a fire. So the Gibson Tire Store was here, and it was destroyed by, in by fire in 1929. But that actually wasn't the first fire that happened in this little stretch of College Ave. And the story behind that fire is actually closely tied to the building that's next door at 215 West College. Um, so we're going to take a look at that building and then we'll dive into that fire story as we wrap up. So 215 West College is the building that's next door to the Gibson. Um, so most recently this housed the Bad Batcher Sports Bar. And as you can see in the window, it says, guess what's coming next? So we're not quite sure what's gonna be there next, but we have to stay tuned to see what's gonna come on College Ave next. Um, so hopefully something cool. So this is another William Waters designed um, building. So again, that same architect that we talked about at the beginning, so kind of bringing us full circle. Um, and this building was done in Italianate architectural style. So again, that most popular architectural style in Wisconsin at this time. So this was historically known as the farmer's home um, location. So back in the spring of 1879, there was a terrible fire here that actually started in the building um, next door before this was the BMO Harris building. There was actually a grocery store called the C.C. Wayland Grocery Store. And the fire ended up totally consuming that grocery store, plus the building that was here at 215. So before this building was built, there was another building there that they were both destroyed by fire. And um, the building that was there at that time was called the Farmer's Home. So the Farmer's Home was a hotel that big surprise their clientele was farmers. Um, so they were usually farmers that would come into town for a night or two um, just to sell their goods and then go back home. So they needed a place to stay when they were in town. So they stayed at the Farmer's Home and maybe that's why it was called the Farmer's Home. Thankfully, the Appleton Fire Department was able to stop the fire at just these two buildings that were destroyed. And after the fire, Wayland, who owned the grocery store, and John Nicholas, who was the owner of the lot of 215 West College, rebuilt. In 1882, John Brill, who was the ex-sheriff of Outagamie County, took over ownership of that farmer's home hotel. And the clientele eventually changed from farmers to be traveling salesmen. So they changed the name to Commercial House in 1883. 
and the land where the Gibson building is, which you can see a little bit of here. Um, so before there was a Gibson building in the 1870s and 1880s, they used that as a wagon yard. And like I said before, when we were talking about the camps building, that's where the camps um, would have their horses and, and things for their, their store. So they'd also use this as a wagon yard for the farmer's home and the commercial house. And they even had a garden there, they had a barn there, they had a well there, they had chicken coops. It was, you know, quite a, a lot of cool things going on when there was no building there. And then in 1921, that's when Eleanor Gibson bought that land and built um, a building there a year later. But then that building was, of course, destroyed in 1929 by a fire before they then built the Art Deco style building that we see today in 1931. Um, so. They, they had to also rebuild um, that building at 215, of course, after that fire of 1879. So that's the building that you see. And of course, it's not the original farmer's home um, building. So some businesses that were here throughout the years, uh, of course, include the farmer's home and commercial house, but like I said, not the same building. Um, State Lunch Restaurant was here, as well as Mary Lester Shop. As you can see, ABC Kitty Shops was also here in that historic photo that we have from the Wisconsin Historical Society, as well as St. Patrick's Bookstore, Mystic Ireland, and then like I said, most recently, Bad Badger's Sports Bar was there. And then here is our final 1957 photo from the Post Crescent showing the 200 block of West College. So from left to right, you can see a little bit of the Gibson building. Then you can see Mary Lester's shop that was at 215 West College. And you can see it says grand opening. So this must have been shortly after or shortly before she was getting ready to open her shop. And then right next door was the foot so port shoes shop and a barber shop, as well as you can see a little small corner of the Appleton State Bank building. So these last two buildings, the, the foot support in the Appleton State Bank building were actually torn down a few years after this photo was taken to make room for the expanded Appleton State Bank building. So those these buildings are, are no longer in existence anymore, but of course these, these ones are, so as we just chatted about. And that brings us to the end of our tour. I know I have thrown a ton of information at you, but if you are still interested in learning more, I want to encourage you to check out our YouTube channel. We have a really great YouTube channel at our uh, for our library. Um, you can see the link right down here, youtube.com slash APLREF. Um, so we have videos on there that will teach you how to research the history of your house um, by a wonderful local professional genealogist, Angie Knudsen, um, teaches you in depth how to research your, your house history. And of course, because she's from Appleton, offers a lot of really great Appleton specific stuff in that video. So definitely check it out. We also have a lot of genealogy videos like you, using your InfoSoup library card for genealogy, teaching you how to use some of our newspaper databases and, and research things um, like local history and genealogy. We also do a monthly Find Your Ancestors genealogy session um, every month. We have lots of great videos on there, like one on how to do newspaper research, which would really help you learn a little bit more about the history of your house or history of other businesses that you would might be interested in Appleton. And of course, we have many other programs for adults, teens, and children's on there. I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with people where I will meet you in person or via Zoom to teach you a little bit more about how to use those library databases for genealogy and local history history research. So definitely feel free to reach out to me. My email address is right here on the screen. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, once we close out of Zoom, I did also want to ask if you would take a minute to fill out our, our short survey. It's just a few questions long, um, just letting us know what you thought of today's program. Um, this is the first time we've done an architectural walk. Um, so we did two in-person sessions last week, and then we did this virtual one just to see how things would go and see what the interest would be like, see if people would love it or hate it. So um, the survey is your opportunity to let us know what you thought and, and give us any feedback you might have, or um, you can definitely feel free to reach out to me via email. So thank you everyone for joining us, and I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Stop my screen share here so I can take a look. Oh, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. Let's see. And I, I have to make a note about um, trying to figure out when parking meters were first installed on College Ave. Feels like they've been here for forever, so it's probably been a while. Unless anybody happens to know or an approximate guess of when parking meters were first installed on College Ave. And no worries that that person had to leave early because we're recording it. So you can definitely check out the, the recording of it on our YouTube channel afterwards.
great memories of the Zilke building. Doctor and dentist were there, got her ears pierced at the doctor's office. $6 for doctor fee and $4 for earrings, about 1969, 1970. Wow, what a great story. Thanks for sharing that, Carol. And thank you, everyone. I'm so glad everybody enjoyed it. And yeah, um, as you let this digest, if you have any more questions, definitely feel free to reach out and, and let me know what you thought or ask any further questions. And yeah, definitely feel free to share the recording with folks. So I hope to do these more of these in the future and, and learn more about Appleton history and share more with you guys. So thank you again for joining us this evening and everybody have a great night. Thanks.